Hi, I'm Rosie, and today I'd like to give an update on my Sailrite Fabricator sewing machine. I do get a lot of questions regarding this machine. People want to know whether or not I still own it, do I use it, and do I still like it. So I'd like to try and answer some of those questions for you today. I have some talking points that I've written up here that I'd like to discuss and go over with you to give you all of my thoughts. First of all, I want to say that there is no perfect sewing machine. I own four industrial machines. The first one that I purchased was the Juki DNU1541S, which is an industrial compound walking machine with a flatbed surface. The second one that I purchased was the Sailrite Fabricator. It is also an industrial compound walking foot machine with a flatbed, with a flatbed surface. The next machine that I purchased was an industrial machine by Juki. It's the DDL8000A and it is a straight stitch industrial machine. It is not a walking foot machine. And then the machine that I purchased most recently was my Texo 4800 Pro, which is also an industrial compound walking foot machine, but it has a cylinder arm with a flatbed attachment to it. There are things that I like and dislike about each one of these machines, but today I'm specifically going to be talking about the Sailrite Fabricator. Before you buy any industrial sewing machine, you want to ask yourself a few questions. The first question would be is, do you have a local service person that you can call on if you get into a serious issue with your machine? I'm very fortunate here in Connecticut. I do have someone who's been in business for decades, and that is Renato Pace at Renato Sewing, and he is excellent if you're in the area. The next question is, if you do not have a local service person, you want to do some research on the person that you are purchasing from, are they going to give you good, reliable service, either by phone or YouTube videos, any uh, email support, anything of that nature, because you are going to need some help with your machine. Another question that you need to ask yourself is, are you willing to do some basic maintenance in maintaining your machine? All industrial machines are going to need some daily oiling depending on how much you use your machine and they will need periodic lubrication or oil changes. You also need to be aware that with an industrial machine that you need to learn how to adjust your top and bobbin tensions. That's not something that you're going to call a service person for. That is something that you need to learn how to do yourself. On most domestic machines these days you don't have to do those sorts of adjustments because these computerized machines do them for you. Now, there are many good Facebook groups out there that will give you support. If you're not getting the support that you need from a dealer, then go to the Facebook groups and ask for help there. There are many very, very kind and wonderful, knowledgeable people out there that can help you. Now let's go on to talk specifically about the fabricator. I did purchase the deluxe model, which does come with the butcher block table, which is very beautiful, and the machine itself is very pretty. Sailrite is a U.S. family-owned business in the United States, and that was very important to me because I do like to support United States businesses. Their customer service is really top-notch. They have very fast response time when you email them with a problem, and they do offer phone support. They have many, many videos on their YouTube channel on how to use and maintain your machine. Their printed material is really excellent. The uh, manual that they send you is in full color with very, very clear illustrations, and it talks a lot about maintenance, and I found it very user-friendly. And there are also independent Facebook groups which are dedicated specifically to the Sailrite Fabricator where you can also get help. The basic maintenance on the machine is very easy. You do have your oiling spots that you need to oil on a daily basis, as I said before. You need to do periodic oil changes in the pan down below the machine. And of course, you always want to keep your bobbin area nice and clean and free of any lint. The machine can handle a wide range of materials. I personally have sewn 100% cotton quilting fabric on this machine that has been interfaced with a woven interfacing up to light leathers, but it will also handle heavier leathers. As far as threads go, I have used a lighter 40 weight thread, and my favorite thread to use is the Gudeman Mara 70. 
This machine handles it beautifully and I will say that this machine does provide a very beautiful stitch. The heaviest thread that I have used is an industrial bonded polyester which is a Tex 70. Now I would like to talk about the ease of sewing on the fabricator. My very first industrial sewing machine was the Juki DNU 1541S. Having only sewn previously on a domestic machine and moving up to the Juki, I felt like I was sewing on a beast. It felt like a powerful piece of machinery. I don't have that feeling with the fabricator. To me, it feels more like handling a domestic sewing machine, yet it can sew through very heavy leather. This was the sample that they sent to me when I received my machine, and this is a very, very thick piece of leather, and the fabricator will go through it with no problem at all. The fabricator does not have a needle positioner, which is a very nice feature to have. But you can lower down the speed of your motor, and you have very good control with your foot pedal. With practice, you can make that needle go up and down a step at a time. Sailrite also offers a variety of specialty feet that you can order right off of their website that are specifically made for the fabricator. Some of the ones that I initially purchased were a right edge guide foot, a 3 16 and a 1 quarter inch cording foot, and the narrow foot. And since purchasing the machine, I've also purchased and installed the leather foot along with the leather feed dogs. The advantage of upgrading to the leather set is that the presser foot has a smooth surface on the bottom of the foot and the feed dogs have a smooth surface as well. So you're not going to mar up your leather as you're sewing. And I have found that I have not had any trouble at all moving materials through the machine with the smooth surfaces on the bottom of the presser foot and the feed dogs. Now I would like to talk about some of my dislikes and you may think some of them are picky and they are. My first gripe is with the hand wheel. I just find the shape of it very hard to grip and turn that wheel manually. But as I said before, you can achieve some very fine control with your needle up and down with a little bit of practice. The second thing that I dislike is the placement of the motor. Now, the motor obviously has your speed control and it also has your on-off switch. The motor is mounted obviously underneath the table but all the way to the rear of the table. I just find it awkward trying to feel for my on-off button when I need to use my machine, so I'm always having to bend over and look at where it actually is. And again, that is probably something picky, but to me it's an annoyance. The next thing that I don't like is that the machine has a side bobbin winder. Now there is nothing wrong with the bobbin winder that comes with the machine. It works perfectly fine. I'm just not a fan of a side winder. I prefer to have my bobbin winder on the front of the machine. My last dislike is with the posi pin. The posi pin is patented by Sailrite and its purpose is to put it into a certain position so that when you're winding a bobbin it will prevent the needle from moving up and down on the machine as the bobbin is winding which is supposed to help with the wear and tear of the machine. My issue with it is that the posi pin makes a knocking sound. Now if you go on Sailrite's YouTube channel, it will tell you how to position your posi pin so that it doesn't make a knocking sound. I did not have any success with that, and the knocking sound was honestly driving me a little bit crazy. It would just go knock, 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 knock as I was sewing. So after many conversations with them on the phone, I opted to eliminate my posi pin, and they did send me all the necessary parts to do so. It was not hard to change everything out, but again, as I said at the beginning of the video, you do need to feel confident about doing some work on your machine, and they did give me all the instructions that I needed to eliminate the posi pin. Now, you may be wondering whether or not I would purchase this machine again, and my answer is no, but I want to qualify my no with an explanation. It's not because I think it's not a good machine, or that it doesn't work well, or that there's bad customer service. It has nothing to do with any of those reasons. My reason is because I'm a bag maker and as a bag maker I have found that using a cylinder arm sewing machine with a flatbed attachment serves me much better. Especially now that I'm older and my hands are getting arthritic I find it very hard to sew in certain parts of a bag like a gusset. It's much easier to sew in a gusset on a cylinder arm. And none of that is to say that the fabricator does not do a good job for bag makers. It obviously does. Many bag makers use it and they make beautiful bags. 
but for me and where I am in my life right now, a cylinder arm serves me much better. So knowing what I know now, if I was buying my very first industrial, I wouldn't buy the Juki DNU 1541S, and I wouldn't buy the Sailrite Fabricator. I would go straight to purchasing a cylinder arm sewing machine. But do keep in mind that a cylinder arm industrial sewing machine is much more expensive than the Sailrite Fabricator. Well, I do hope that this information has been helpful to you. Make sure that you do all the research that you need to do before you make your decision, because these machines are expensive. Don't take just my opinion. You want to go and research what others have to say as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day.